What are you doing on railway property? Taking a shortcut. Come off it, mate. You'll have to think of a better one than that. What's your name and address? Foot eight, age 25 to 30, clean shaven, dark hair, brown eyes, blue tweed coat and grey flannel trousers. No hat, no overcoat. Last seen turning into Pike Street, less than 900 yards from here. Baron? Oh, he's all right. Gonna have a lovely eye on him in the morning. You don't go winking at anyone or you'll open up that cut again. Right, I'll let you know if anything else happens. The city boys have sent out a general call for the perisher, Charlie. Don't you fret, they'll get him all right. Get him? They won't, you know, Sarge. From the look of all that, you'd think he'd been trying to do repair work to the rolling stock. What might this be? Hold it, Sarge. It's a detonator you're playing with. No, it's all right. Tap it a bit harder, lose all your fingers. Are you sure, Charlie? I'm sure, all right. Never stop mucking about with these in the army. Now, what could a bloke want in a goods yard with a box full of detonators? We'd better find out. Hello? Exchange? Give me control, will you, mate? Hello, control? What's been through here since nine? General Freight? Yeah. London Express, yeah. Anything else? Special freight consigned to Portsmouth Naval Dockyard. Aye, aye. What was she carrying? Thanks, mate. This looks like a hot one. Hello? Railway quarters? Give me the super. Oh, he's in hospital, is he? Well then, give me his own security. Mr. Warrilow, if he ain't in his office, get him at his home. Yes, I see. All right, now listen to me. Inform control straight away. Tell them to find the best place to park the train. And send Baron to city headquarters to wait for me. I shall be there in ten minutes. Have you got that? All right. Do you have to go out, Jim? Yes. What is it this time? Oh, it's probably nothing. I shan't stay longer than I have to, love. You know that. And don't go sticking your silly neck out. At least stick my neck out. What do you think? I have a new recruit. Now, you go to bed. Don't worry. Good night, Tim. Good night. And now, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, raise silence for the Chief Constable of Birmingham, Sir Evelyn Jordan. <laughs> my lords, ladies and gentlemen, oratory is an art Little practiced in the police force. We are, I'm afraid to say, slaves of this stereotype, in that we have two short and very unpopular speeches upon which we pin most of our faith. The first one is, I hereby charge you with offense, trespass, misdemeanor, and being a general nuisance in more ways than one. <laughs> yes, we believe. I'm afraid I must ask you to excuse me. Uh, 
Oh, sorry to drag you away from your dinner, sir, but I'm afraid this is a stinker. Your men are out on the job already. All right, tell me about it as we go along. getting thicker. Gonna be late at this rate. Well, cheer up, Tosh. What's a bit of mist? A bit of mist's the thing that causes pile-ups. I wish we was all in cabbages. There wouldn't be much of a pop if these cabbages went off. That's about where she is now, sir. Couldn't we allow her to carry on till she got to the open country? If she went up going through Red Hill, she might kill thousands of people. And don't forget, there's traffic coming through the other way, passenger stuff. No, she's got to be diverted. The siding here, but I doubt if we could stop her in time. How about Fellsworth? Oh, there is an abandoned siding there, sir, but it's mighty close to a lot of houses. Pardon me, sir. I live near that siding. What's it like there, Briggs? Any open ground? Not much, sir. Just the old station yard. Better than nothing. Get the police, Jenkins, and tell them that's where we'll stop her. My house? My wife? Couldn't you... Sorry, lad. The more we delay, the more danger there'll be for everybody. The police will lose no time in evacuating people from the danger area. Don't worry. Hurry up now and get the thing diverted. Fog around, isn't there? Tell them to put warning signals on the line. And have the signalman instruct the crew to take the engine off when they abandon the train. Can't afford to throw away locomotives for no good reason. Ask the Navy what the effect of an explosion of a trainload of sea mines would be. Mm, what do they say, sir? In a circle, radius 500 yards, complete destruction of all houses. Next circle, 700 yards, severe damage. An outer circle, 1,000 yards, danger from flying glass and falling tiles. Got it? Mm. We'll have to evacuate everybody within the outer circle, won't we? I'm afraid so. Get them moving, starting with the houses nearest the train. Yeah, there must be up to 5,000 houses in that circle. Yes, and with an average of three people per house, you'll need a lot of buses. Could I have the taxis off the streets, do you think? You can have anything you like for this job, only hurry it along. Right. Anything else, sir? Well, give me a call if you want anything, but take it without asking. Right, sir. Good evening, Brent. Oh, good evening, sir. Well, come in, James. Found the blighter, sir? Not a sign of him. Then he either got away before the call went out, or he's gone to ground so thoroughly it'll take a month of Sundays to find him. I'm afraid so. Willard came in just now. They raided every hole in the ground in Birmingham. Yes, what now? 
It seems to me we've got to try to do something brighter than watch roads and railways and search a few more boarding houses. Indeed we have. Your man Baron might be our trump card. Can we borrow him? You've already got him. He's in the outer office looking through your rogues gallery. Baron, come in, will you? That's a lovely shiner you bought yourself, Constable. Yes, sir. We've just about decided that your man might have left the city. If he has, where do you think he'd go? Portsmouth, sir. Why Portsmouth? Well, that's where the train's going, and if I were the beggar, I'd want to see what damage I'd done. Good. So would I. Do you mind if we send him to Portsmouth? No, of course not. Right. We'll provide you with a car and arrange for somebody to meet you. You'll be in plain clothes. You got the idea, Baron? I've got it, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Good luck, my friend. I hope you make the pinch. Bright lad, that. Mm. Now, what about the explosives experts, sir? Now, we're running through our files now to see who we can turn up. I'll give them another call. Fire room here. Oh, yes, sir. Well, you might try this one, sir. He's right here in Birmingham. Major Peter Lincourt, Royal Canadian Engineers Bomb Disposal Unit. Born Quebec, Canada. Now employed by Anglo-Canadian Machine Tool Company Limited, Birmingham. Home address, 34 Greville Road, Birmingham 12. He's married. J'en ai marre, mon cher. Je te dis que j'en ai marre. J'en ai assez, assez, assez. Tu ne me parles jamais. Tu manges, tu bois, tu dors. Tu es ici comme si tu étais à l'hôtel, c'est tout. I say it again in English so I know what you're talking about. Hmm? I am leaving you. Don't you understand that? I am bored. I hate your work, your friends, the way we are living. <laughs> Will you stop laughing at me like that? Don't you understand? I've had enough. Now look, when you've calmed down, I'll be downstairs having a drink. That's your answer to everything, isn't it? Je peux pas comprendre pourquoi on essaie pas de comprendre les choses. Pourquoi on n'est pas gentil avec les gens? Three, blimey, the emergency stop. been on. Some joke has been monkeying about with your load. It's liable to blow up at any minute. You got to hurry. You've got to abandon the load. They said to divert you to the Fellsworth siding. That's what they said. You're all clear, but take your gent around the curb because that line's not used once in a month of Sundays. Who's been monkeying about with our load? How do they know? I know them mines. If they all go up, there's enough to flatten Birmingham. I know nothing except what they've told me. They said it were terrible urgent. Don't ask questions, mate. Abandon the load. I don't know that we can do that without proper instructions. Look, I'm giving you instructions. I've told you twice. You're to take it to the Fellsworth siding. They said that. Direct orders, they said. Abandon the load, they said. Uncouple the loco and drive her away. Aye, aye, what's up? You're to back off. He says we're in trouble. You better hop back on. We'll tell you about it later. Do as he says. Don't ask questions. Draw up ahead and I'll switch you on to the siding. Those were siding, you said? Yes, will you get a move on? I'll do my duty, but I'll not lose me head enough for you nor anyone else. Jump on, Arthur. We're going for a joyride.
I'll send for the rest of my luggage tomorrow. Goodbye, Peter. You're really going, aren't you? Yes, I am really going home to Paris. Just because you're bored, that's no reason to, to break up a marriage. I'm trying to save a marriage, Peter. Not break one up. By running off to Paris in the middle of the night? You're just trying not to understand. I'm frightened. This is the tenth quarrel we've had in a week. Who started them? I did. That's what I mean. They were not all my fault? You just said they were. I did not. I said I started them. I had every right to. Oh, darling, what does it matter whose fault they were? They were silly little quarrels anyway. That's what I thought too. But don't you see that, that a lot of little quarrels like that can spoil a marriage as effectively as a few big ones? Hey, you're making that very plain to me right now. Well, I'm going for a rest from quarrels silly or otherwise. And Birmingham. Look, I didn't ask to live in Birmingham. The company sent me here. What do you want me to do? I don't want you to do anything except be the man I married. You married a soldier on wartime leave. I married a girl who was driving a jeep. You, you want to go back to that? I wish we could. At least then you were gay and gallant and alive. No, I'm just a... just a dull businessman. Is that what you mean? Yes. Just what I mean. Fine. It's nice to know where we stand. Maybe your whole life can revolve happily around making nuts and bolts, but mine can't. And if you don't know it, it's time you found out. I've told you a thousand times we don't make nuts and bolts. Armaments, then, or whatever it is that pushed me out of your life. I remember the time when I was important to you, too. You still aren't. Oh, no, I'm not. Just look at me once the way you used to. I am a woman, Peter. A woman. I know you're a woman. Now, let's stop all this. Now, come on. I tell you what let's do. Let's go down to Carlos and get ourselves a bottle of champagne. Hmm? What we always do, it never solves anything. No. Look, if you'll just wait a while, I'll, I'll go to Paris with you. We'll go together. We'll have a vacation together. Then come with me now. Now, please, darling, come with me. Without hesitation or argument or anything. You know I can't come now. I've got a hundred appointments tomorrow. You always have appointments. You're not coming back. I don't know. I just don't. Steen to dry the Queen Mary. Could we have missed it? No. Well, how long since you've been up this bit of line? Some time, but I haven't forgotten it. Well, if there's a pub within a mile of this place, we'll break the door down. We could do with a drink out of this lot.
Mrs. M. I'll do my best to keep them quiet, but it's old Harry's birthday, that's why. Quiet, gentlemen, please. Let's have a little bit of quiet. Please, quiet. We're being raided. No, I get it. Not even close in time. Come on. All out. Uh, what's the idea? No time to waste. What's the idea? I mean, I mean, you can't be out Oh, Major Lincourt? Yes? I'm Warrelow of the Railway Police. Could I have a word with you, sir? Sure. Thank you. Come in. If we weren't pretty sure that the saboteur set his device to go off on arrival at Portsmouth, we shouldn't ask anybody to go near the train. What time does the train do at the dockyards? 6.40 tomorrow morning. 6.40? Hmm. Let's see, that gives you uh, a little less than eight hours. Of course, you know, it doesn't have to be a time mechanism. Could be a booby trap, could be a proximity device set to detonate by the heat of an adjacent body. Talk about the age of science. Well? You know, you picked kind of a bad night for me. I just had a row with my wife. A job like this takes a man with steady hands. Well, I'm sorry, but steady or not steady, you're the only man in the area who can help us. Looks like you're stuck with me. <laughs> well, I hope they haven't thought up anything new since I fought my way out of the army. Oh, uh, do you mind if we stop by a hospital on the way? Of course not, but what for? I want to pick up an electric stethoscope. Then I'll need some tools. First class single to London, please. Next train is not until 2.15, miss. Isn't there a train at 10.50? Not since last month. 10.30, but it's gone. In fact, you're liable to have a longer wait than that on account of this trouble. Trouble? There's a freight train way down the line full of explosives and it's liable to go up at any minute. How terrible. Well, I think I'll wait all the same. You follow the others. Don't worry. We'll find the boy. Oh, he ain't a boy. He's older than what you are. Oh. He won't know what to make of all this. If he goes out back and sees that train, he'll never come. He loves trains. Well, off you go, all the same. I'll find Charlie and bring him to you. All right. But mind you talk civil to him or he won't come. All right.
Charlie. 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 Charlie, where are you? Is that you, Sarah? Sarah's looking for you, Charlie. Come on, over here and I'll take you to her. There hasn't been a train here for years. Yes, I know. I like trains. This is not a good one for you to like. Charlie! Sarah's worried stiff. I don't care. Charlie, come on. This is no place for you. Leave me be. Sarah wants you. Let her. I'm going to stay here. Do you grow these? Yes. Pretty, ain't they? I'll tell you something. There's lots better ones over there in the churchyard. Come on, let's go and pick some. Yes, yes, but then it'd be stealing. Not if we get permission, it won't. Don't worry, I'll have a word with the vicar. But he won't let you. Yes, I he want won't. to stay and see the trains. I don't Never want mind. to go over I'll come here. On. Over here, Charlie. I can't see I'll... it. You're all right, Ma, don't you worry. We'll have you tucked up in bed again in no time. I ain't worrying, lad. Aren't you? No. I can't get more than a couple of hours sleep a night in here. Why should I object to a nice little outing? Well, that's one way of looking at it, I suppose. <laughs> you wait till you're as old as me, my boy. You won't be frightened of anything. I'm 84, you know. 84? Struth, I thought you were 30. I was going to ask you to come to the pictures with me on Saturday night. Ah, oh, go on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What a night, sir. Never knew there could be so many people in such a small area. I knew. I worked it out. I had no idea it was going to take as long as this, though. Better go and hurry them along, Sergeant. They're moving too ruddy slowly. Inspector Branson. He's right over there, sir. Hello, sir. Branson, this is Major Lincourt. He's going to search the train for us. Rather you than me. How far is it from here? About 200 yards. Reed, show them the way to the train. Straight through the graveyard. Well, that's an ironic touch. Let's get down to the next assembly point. she is. Sure you won't want any help? No. Quite sure. Those mines must weigh over a ton apiece. That's right. Couldn't move one of those mines to plant a charge. I won't have to move one to find it. Thanks anyway. Very well. If you need a hand, flash the light or just holler. OK. Good luck. See if you can stop those confounded bells. Give me the jitters.
Beethoven now, Virgil. We can do without the bells. This is an emergency. It's my duty to ring the bells when there's an emergency. And stop ringing, Trip. Off you go to see that your wife is safe. Aren't you coming, Vicar? In a moment. With any luck, sir, they won't be harmed. As always, we're in God's hands. Yes, sir. We have an expert who's searching the train. All the same, sir, it's time you got out of here. This glass would fly something cruel of the mines were to go up. I'll only keep you over there. Almighty God, in your great mercy, protect your children in their danger. Protect also their belongings and their homes. Protect the police and the railway men who are risking their lives in the performance of their duty. Especially protect the brave man who is walking alone into the valley of the shadow of That'll be Fortin's, please. I'd be obliged if you keep your eyes to yourself. Just giving you your due, my dear. Respectful admiration. Very respectful. Mind if I sit here, miss? You're waiting for the 2.15. Don't like these late trains. But I'm due at a very important meeting in London at 9.30 in the morning. Very important. Board of directors of a big company. Ladies' clothes, that's my line. Je suis française, je ne parle pas un mot d'anglais. I like French girls. Beaucoup. Will you go away? I thought you said you didn't speak English. I speak English better than you do. Go away. Trouble with you, my dear, is you're tired and lonely. Now, if you have a trouble, you ought to share it. Never know, I might be able to help. You got me wrong, you know. I'm not in the habit of forcing my company on ladies.
are all the taxis? They've all been commandeered, miss. That trainload of mines down the line, they think it's been sabotaged. They're having to evacuate off the suburbs. Oh, i better try and catch a bus. Oh, you won't catch no bus neither, miss. They've been commandeered too. Where do you want to go to, miss? I don't know. I haven't decided. Better make up your mind, miss. You shouldn't be wandering about by yourself. Can I come up? Who are you? I'm Charlie. I like trains. Well, get off this one and stay off. That's what the other man said, but, but I like trains. I don't care what you like. You've got to get away from no, here. I, I won't do it. I want to stay and play, too. Why should you hold me like this? He's flashing his light. I wonder what's up. It's as much my train as it is yours. What's the train? Oh, it's Charlie. Charlie, Come I on. sent you to Sarah. Why didn't you stay I there? couldn't find Sarah. Don't I don't want Charlie. Sarah. Come I'm on the train. Come with me. Leave we'll me alone. Don't take me. I want to see the train. I don't want Sarah. You too. Buonasera, signora. How are you tonight? Fine, Carlo, fine. Is my husband here? No. What have I done that you haven't come to see me for so long? What do you mean, so long? We were here less than a week ago. One week you are not here, that's like a year, signora. But hasn't he been here at all tonight? No, I haven't seen him since the last time you were here together. Oh, I thought maybe... Oh, he might still come. We do not close before 2.30. Why not come in and be seated? Well, I would like a sandwich or something. That's right, Signora. And I'll bring you a bottle of wine, the kind you both like.
Cup of tea, sir. Hmm? Oh, good for you, Reed. Where'd you find it? Somebody left the back door of the pub open, sir. Breaking and entering. What's the police force coming to? Coming to its senses, sir, if you ask me. What you put in it, a distillery? Just a tot of rum, sir. I brought one from Major Lincourt. No, no, you don't. No, I'll take it to him. No, I can take it to him, sir. Yeah, never mind. Court, I brought you a mug of tea. Thought I told you to stay away from here. All the same, I thought you'd like a drink of tea. It's got half a bottle of rum in it. Oh. oh thanks. No luck with the electric whatnot? No. What are you doing now? Taking off the cover place. There's nothing on the outside. Well, what about the booby traps and all the other horrors you mentioned? Oh, I think we can forget about that. I've been pretty careless. If there'd been any booby traps, we'd have known about it. At least you would have. Would it be safe to say you're on the home stretch? The only trouble is the home stretch is the longest part of the track. I'll beat it so I can get some work done, huh? You got all those wagon loads to search? Yeah. It's nearly two o'clock. Four and a half hours in hand at the outside, you haven't got a chance. You have to be in the last mine. Well, what do you think you're doing? Well, two pairs of hands are better than one. Look, I told you I don't want any help. You may not want it, but you need it. I don't be a fool. I'm not clumsy nor particularly stupid. You said yourself there can't be a booby trap. Now look, there may be a trip device right underneath that plate you're sitting on. Will you please go back to the graveyard, huh? Three hours ago, you were probably right to refuse help. But I don't think you are now. Why not tell me what a trip device looks like? All right. You asked for it. I hope you don't get it. What a relief to be in complete agreement for a change. I hope so, too. Now, you see this bolt here? Mm -hmm. Now, you loosen this bolt very, very carefully. And when that's loose, you lift up this cover plate very gently. You lift it up just far enough to put your fingers underneath to see if there's a wire there. Yeah, sure, there's no wire. And then you take the cover plate off. Now you look inside and try to find something. Just to be sure, though, you take you take this stick mm -hmm. and you probe around inside. Very, very carefully. You see? What if I find a wire? Well, if you find a wire, you break the news to me in a very hoarse whisper, and I'll try to disarm the thing. Meantime, you do a bit of praying. Mm -hmm. If there's no wire, what am I looking for? Box, bag, a bundle. Here. Yeah. Thank you. Probably some homemade device. But you might as well start working on this one here. I'm sorry, Signora. 2.30. The law says we must close. I'm sorry, Carlo. Can you call a taxi for me, please? Well, there are no taxis. Oh, of course. They have been taken for the people who are going to blow up. Oh, maybe they will not blow up on the midnight wireless. They said there was a man working on the mines to make them harmless. I wish they had all chosen another night for it. If the Signora would allow me, I would drive her home. Thank you, Carlo. The Signora would allow.
to go and two hours to make it in. We're not going to make it, are we? Not at the rate we're going. Would you like me to get Reed along to give us a hand? No, let's stick to the no amateur rules, eh? I seem to remember. Now, you've had an intensive course. You've graduated. You're, you're a BBD. You're a bachelor of bomb disposal. I'm not a bachelor, in fact. Yes, and neither am I. Do you think you remember the Joker's face? Huh. Remember it as long as I live. Well, try not to spoil it. He may have a mother. Him, he wasn't born. They found that perisher under a stone somewhere. I'd better be getting out there. I'd hate to miss him. Good hunting. Hospital. I wondered, uh, have you had a, a, an accident case in tonight called Lincourt? Major Peter Lincourt. It's Mrs. Lincourt speaking. Hard luck, chum. Maybe he'll be on the next. Next one's not till after 11. He won't be on that.
General Hospital. I want to have you had an accident case in called Lincourt. It's Mrs. Lincourt speaking. No, I don't recall anyone of that name being admitted, Mrs. Lincourt. Oh, thank you very much. Wait a minute, Lincourt. A Major Lincourt did come in about 11 o'clock last night to borrow an electric stethoscope. <laughs> it was something to do with the explosives train down the line at Fellsworth. Where? Fellsworth. We've been swamped with invalid evacuees from the district ever since. Sir? Sir, they got him. They got the blighter at Portsmouth. A message has just come through in short wave. It's almost six. Too late to be useful. Might as well have him here all the same. Tell him to get him here as quickly as it's humanly possible, Reed. Say it's desperately urgent. He's on his way, sir. I took the responsibility on my own. The Navy's bringing him in. Reed, that's wonderful. I love you like my mother. Now get away from this filthy train. Aye, aye, sir. Do we go on? Surely he wouldn't have timed it to go off just as the train arrived. Wouldn't he give it... Half an hour to get right into the dockyard? Yeah, probably. These chemical time fuses are never accurate. They vary with atmospheric pressure, temperature. As much as half an hour? Sometimes more. Tell you what we'll do. Let's split the difference, huh? Work another 15 minutes. Thanks. I think I found something. Don't move it. It's a wire or something. Here, give it to me. Easy. All right, there's nothing more you can do now. Get away from here. Hear what I said? Get away from here.
What was it? Here it is. It's a copper tube with a glass container of acid right here. You see, when that tube is broken, the acid eats through a copper wire that's attached to a spring. See, I got a nail in here to keep it from working. The spring has a striker on it. The striker hits the detonator, up she goes. Yes, yeah, simple, too simple. Could have been made in any workshop. Well, that's that, huh? It's a pity the saboteur didn't get here before we found it. We could have got some information out of him. He doesn't have to know we found it. If he sees me still looking for it when he gets here. I was hoping you'd suggest that. Thanks. Now, will everybody please be quiet and listen to me? I have just been informed that the train is no longer liable to blow up, therefore there is no more danger. So I'm very happy to tell you that you may all return to your homes. Have you found anything? No. When's it time to blow up? I don't know what you're talking about. You're lying. You know what you planted and when it'll go off. Where is it? Stay there until you tell us where it is, who employed you to plant it, and the name of all your associates. Murder always was part of fascist police methods. Not murder. Suicide. If you choose to live, wave your arms. We should be watching from over there. Come on, let's get away from here. some sandwiches. Not very good, I'm afraid, but the best I could dig up at this time in the morning. Oh, thanks. Here's yours, sir. Oh, thank you, Reed. Careful, sir. It's hot. They're making some more tea. I'll go and fetch it for you. Some for you, Baron. No, thanks. Getting worried, sir. He's yanking like mad at the chain. Yes, he ought to be getting worried. It's nearly seven. Of course, he may be a fanatic and not care if he blows himself up. He's waving, sir. He's giving up. He's waving at us. Aren't you coming? No, I'll wait here. Well? 
I'll talk, I'll talk, I promise. I'll tell you anything. Take me away, please take me away. It's past time, it'll go any minute. Take me away, please take me away. All right, talk. Not here, not here, I tell you. It'll go any minute, it'll go any second. I said the delay's for seven o'clock. Delays? More than one? Yes, yes, more than one. I said two. One at the top, one at the bottom of the mine. Do you want to die? For mercy's sake, take me away! Something wrong, sir. They're running for it. Go back, go back. There's a second charge in the same mine. Run for it. Come back, Lincoln! Don't be a fool! There's no time! Peter! 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 Get away from here. Run, please. No. You all finished now, mate? Can I have a go? What was that? If you're through, can I have a go? Through with what? Climbing on this train. You're not the only one, you know. It ain't just your train. Fine, you go right ahead. You help oh, yourself. Oh, it's all yours. Thank you. I like trains. I like trains. I like trains. <laughs> 